who's ready to get overly passionate about soap operas. Do you ever have it when people ask you just casually what you thought of EastEnders and then like you apply with a big going like oh yeah let me just get my notes out pal and then respond with a whole presentation and then they're just like oh my god what is wrong with you I just over analyse everything too much and I probably don't even put that all across in these videos because I like to keep them short I say these videos I've literally done one but um yeah I'm just gonna go through each storyline this time because I have a lot to say I'm so happy that Nancy is back. I think she's great. I love her character. She did kind of disrespect Sharon a little bit and Sharon is sort of the goddess of EastEnders in my opinion so I wasn't too happy about that but look characters aren't going to get on just because they don't get on with each other doesn't mean they can't both be iconic. Um, not saying that Nancy is iconic which she could be iconic in the future but um, she, she's got potential. I love her lots. And I'm glad she's back. You know, it's nice to build up the Cart family again. I think they need that because they've really been lacking recently. Like, they had Callum and Whitney living in there for a while, but they're not really Carters. I did like it when Callum was there, like, in his halfway era. I thought that was brilliant. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Recently, it was a bit, a bit, a little bit dead in there. So it's nice that they've got Nancy, Frankie, Ollie, Shirley, and, of course, Mick and Linda. So Nancy this week has um, CBD oil. I didn't actually know what that was, um, but yeah, Linda was obviously very uh, worried about her, always checking up on her. And I think the problem is like, yeah, she cares and that's lovely, but she's just so overbearing. And when Nancy does try and tell her what's going on, she just kicks off and she did the same with Johnny when he came out, I can't remember what happened with Lee but I'm pretty sure she ki she just kicks off all the time whenever her children just breathe. I understand, like obviously she's a mum, she's going to be worried but just you can't keep kicking off because then your kids aren't going to tell you anything. Obviously Zach had a little bit of a flirt with Nancy and to be fair I love the work he put in, like he was like getting her a job just because she, I don't know, just because he fancied her I guess, I'm like... I wish I could get a job that easily, you know. I think I think good for him if he's gonna, he's if that's how he wants to make his moves. Then fair enough. I love seeing Nancy and Frankie together. I think it's it's quite realistic how they're doing it at the moment. I don't know if they are getting on well at the moment, but I don't know if they're gonna clash at some point coming up. I can definitely see that happening. Like EastEnders, do not let a female friendship or or you know relative um, relationship. They never let it stay good for long. They always seem to have people falling out, um, especially women. Like, you know, for example, Stacey and Ruby, that was a lovely friendship. And ugh. anyway, I'm going to move on because that storyline was good, but it wasn't really the main thing this week. Stuart and Rainey's surrogacy. I've got a lot to say about this. Now, I really don't know if the EastEnders writers and producers have even, like, researched surrogacy because usually when they do storylines about... Um, things that happen in real life they do research it but they they it doesn't feel like they have first of all Stuart and Rainey keep getting like 17 18 year olds to try and be their surrogate um, I don't know if you know this but you've actually got to be over 21 and you've got to have given birth already so even if Bernadette um, um, how old is she she's I'm pretty sure she's not over 21 maybe I should look that up yeah, she's only 18, I just checked, so she wouldn't be allowed to be a surrogate for another three years and she'd have to give birth first, uh, unless they go and do it in another country, I guess, but I don't even know, I don't know if that's allowed. So either they're going to um, try and go ahead with the surrogacy and discover that, or they're just going to do the storyline and the writers actually don't know that that's the law. I, re I really hope that. <laughs> That's not the case because it's kind of embarrassing if they don't know what the laws are surrounding surrogacy but I don't know, we'll see I guess. Moving on, I've got a lot of storylines to get through and I don't want this video to be super long because I hate long YouTube videos, they annoy me so much. I love Mila's storyline so much. Mila and Ikra but mostly Mila. I think she's a brilliant new character. I love how she came onto the show because at first you sort of thought she was going to be 
a sort of background character like Tracy or Shrimpy for example but she's actually like got a storyline and she's becoming a main character and I love it. I love her and Itka together. I hated Ash and Itka. I liked them at first but you just never really saw anything of them. When they did finally start getting storylines it was just kind of the breakdown of their relationship so it was it was nice to start off with but then I don't know you just never really got to see it develop. And they were already together when Ash came onto the show and uh, when it comes to relationship storylines I love to see like the two characters getting together, like how they meet and everything. That's why I loved Stuart and Rainey so much because that was like a really long process. Just loads of, yeah, I think I think it's much better if you see them getting together. So I really like Mila and Ikra. And I thought it was so cute when Mila and Kathy were getting to know each other and Kathy was like, oh, come stay at my house. I just, I love Kathy so much. She's just the best character ever. And she's so beautiful as well. She's like supposed to be 70 and she looks honestly so young and youthful it's amazing i think mila's such a strong character as well putting her foot down saying to her mother no i'm not coming with you i'm happy in wolford and something i found really interesting as well is um before her mum left she said i've already done enough for this family and i was like what's she done i guess it it could mean anything, it could just sort of be referring to everything she's been through, but I don't know, the way she said it, it sort of made me think that something's going to be revealed in the future, like something she's done. So I'm really looking forward to finding out what happens with that. Do you know what? This is quite a positive video, isn't it? Last week I was just complaining all the time, but I actually proper enjoy the show this week. Next storyline, we're ticking off these storylines. Whitney, Grey, Ben and Callum. Obviously this is frustrating to watch because this is all I talked about in my last video it's very frustrating to watch because obviously the Callum and Whitney are falling out um, Ben and Callum are probably gonna fall out over it next week yeah Whitney hates the Mitchells now even though she was supportive of them a few weeks ago when or a few months ago when they were proposing to each other but anyway yeah they're all just arguing with each other and we as the viewers know that it's actually all Grey's fault and he's manipulating Whitney. Oh my god, a pigeon just flew by. Um, I thought it was going to come into the window but it went up at the last second, that's good. I went on about this so much last time but it's just Grey's whole existence on the show it just makes me so uncomfortable. I hate watching, I mean I guess it's a good storyline but I just hate watching it. Like you just know how awful he is and everyone else thinks he's amazing and it's just oh it's the worst thing ever to watch. I think that storyline is going to be the main thing next week from the looks of things because you know it was the Duff Duff on Friday so I just wanted to mention that quickly. Now I'm going to go on to the main storyline this week. I love the Taylor storyline. I think it's the best storyline going on in the show at the moment. I think it's really nice how they're linking it in with Bernie and obviously her wanting to help Stuart and Rainey. So yeah, I love it when the storylines tie in with each other and that hasn't happened. It's happened a little bit, but not a lot in COVID, I don't think, because I think the groups of actors have been in sort of work bubbles if that makes sense. I think the Taylor storyline is the best one at the moment. It's just so realistic, it's just showing their struggles and Bailey is, I, honestly she is the best character in the whole show and I think I've said that about nearly every character at this point but she is just amazing. I just love her, she's so Oh, just the way she's such a good person and she's more mature than any of them even though she's a child. I thought Karen did some great acting this week. I can't remember the actress's name but she was really really good this week. When she had her breakdown it was so realistic. It was so sad to watch. It was so convincing. I'm pretty sure they'll find Bailey because it would be pretty horrifying if like something bad happened to her and I don't know if EastEnders well, I mean, I don't know, they could go down that route, but I think we would have heard something about it in the press if um, they were going to do that, so hopefully Bailey will be found. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Oh, no, wait, I didn't talk about Honey and Jay and Billy. Who cares? That was kind of boring. Um, oh, yeah, no, I do have one prediction for that. I predict that Honey and Billy are going to get back together because she was sort of giving her him her eyes at the end of that episode, so... That's my prediction, they're going to get back together at some point. Thank God for that as well, because I don't like Jay and Honey together one bit. <laughs> I really liked the dynamic between the two characters, um, 
a few months ago, but I just there's no need for them to be in a romantic relationship. It's just kind of weird. I don't know. Anyway, I've got everything off my chest now, so when people ask me what I think of EastEnders, I don't have to respond to them with a dissertation and have them think I'm crazy. So thanks for watching if you watch this. Bye!